Good evening and welcome to my unboxing of my brand new tent which is the Outkit Tarp Star One. And the reason I bought this tent is because in about six months time, I'm gonna be walking the coast to coast, Wayne Wright's coast to coast, very excited about that. And the only possible tents that I could take at the moment are my Wild Country Helm Compact One. Uh, or my Lanshan 2 and I've been deliberating and going over it and researching and so on. Uh, the biggest obstacle that I've got is budget. Um, I don't have a lot of spare cash, like a lot of us at the moment, um, to buy a very, very pricey ultralight backpacking tent. Um, the Helm Compact one I took on the South Downs way and it did the job, but just looking at kind of ways of just sort of cutting down on the weight. Also, I'm going to be going out in summer to do the coast to coast, and the helm is just like a, a, an oven, <laughs> basically. So it's heavy, it's going to be hot, it's just not suitable. Uh, Lanshan 2 is all right. Um, yeah, it's okay, but I just don't know if I can fully rely on it. It can get a bit faffy. So just looking for other options. So I found this tent on the Outkit website. Uh, they got a January sale on at this moment. I think it's uh, due to finish very, very shortly. And they've got a few items on sale. And this tent was reduced from $159.99 to $139.99, which uh, immediately caught my eye. Uh, so it's a one person tent. It's got a one person sleeping area on the inner, and it's got a very, very large porch. And uh, the reason for that is it's got a very generous pitch size of 250 by 200 by 130 centimeters. So it's got quite a decent bit of space on the, on the, on the face of it. Um, it only needs one trekking pole, which is handy because I'll be taking two with me. Uh, the ideal height is 125 centimeters, which is okay for most trekking poles and it, it is for me. The tarp or the, the fly sheet, tarp, fly sheet, whatever you want to call it, weighs in at 500 grams and the inner weighs in at 450 grams. The inner uh, fills about half of the top area. So that's a total of 950 grams. My Helm Compact One is about 1.9, 1, 1, 1.8. Uh, the Lanshan Two is around a kilo, I think. Um, there is a footprint, an optional footprint that you can get with this tent. Uh, that's another 270 grams on top. So I guess that would take you up to, what, that about 1,200, 1,250 grams. And the footprint costs about 40 pounds, um, which is quite a lot. Um, I know there are arguments for going for the kind of own brand footprint. So I read the spec, had really, really good reviews. Um, it's a quick pitch and I just thought I'm gonna buy it. Okay. Let's get on with the unboxing, or the, in this case, uh, the unbagging. I've got the scissors at the ready. You need to be pretty careful, don't you, when you've got your scissors and you're unbagging a brand new tent. So we're gonna be pretty, pretty careful here. Let's get into it. Ah, oh, I don't even need the scissors. Thank you, Outkit. Okay, so let's see what we got. I think that's everything. So I've uh, got my receipt, delivery note, whatever you want to call it. And um, yeah, it comes in this uh, little drawstring bag. And um, we've got the, the label on there and there's a little, uh, little tarp star one tag. So the name of the tent just on the the outside, in case um, I forget, I suppose. Okay, so if I was to take this bag with me, which is unlikely on a hike, I don't tend to take tent bags with me. Um, it's a top loading bag, which for some people can be a bit frustrating, kind of getting it back into the bags, so that might be a consideration. And we've got um, just your standard little kind of cord just to tie it all up. All right, and inside we have got some pegs. Let's just take a look at those pegs. I don't know whether these are gonna be suitable for what I want. Um, I have got alternative pegs 
kind of fake um, MSR pegs that I used on the South Downs Way that were actually really, really good. Fake groundhog pegs, I think they were. Anyway, let's have a look at what the Outkit ones are like. I do have one other Outkit tent, which is the Outkit Tetris. So this is the first Outkit tent I bought for quite a while. Ah, oh, so we have got these little um, kind of V stakes, I guess. They're not bad, actually. They're better than what I thought they were. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve of those. And I've also got in the bag there some spare material, I guess for just sort of repairs. And I think, yeah, that's everything. Right, so we'll put the pegs to one side. Next out of the bag is the fly sheet and the color that Outkit call this is kelp sort of dark sea green kind of color. I've actually got the Outkit Hunker XL Bippy bag in this color and it's really nice and it blends in really, really well. So that's, that's a thumbs up. Because sometimes I think when you get these tents, they can look different on the websites to what they actually look like in front of you. And actually this, in this light, <laughs> it doesn't look too bad. It actually looks like what it's supposed to. So that's, that's pretty good. Um, we've got a sort of small table here. So I'm gonna get it out completely, just gonna have a quick look at it. So one thing to note about this tent is it doesn't have any guy lines. Um, it just has pegging out points all the way around the, the tent because it's a pyramid tent. Um, it relies on the structure of the sort of the physics, I suppose, of the pole being in the middle and it kind of supporting itself. So I think when I pitch this, I just wanna make sure that it's reasonably taut. Um, and I suppose the, the pegging out points are like kind of guy lines kind of built in. I guess the proof of the pudding would be in a windy situation. Just having a look on the inside. Yeah, we've got all taped seams, so we've got no seam sealing to do, which is fantastic. And the stitching here, it seems pretty well made. Um, and those are those um, tie-out points. I should mention that this fly sheet is made of 20D ripstock nylon, and it's got a hydrostatic head of 3,000 millimeters. Okay, we'll swap that over. And then we've got the inner here and the inner is 20D nylon. Um, it doesn't actually say what its waterproofness is like, the ground sheet part of the inner on the, on the website, but if I can find that out, I'll put it up on the screen. The other thing I really like about this setup is if I wanted to, I could just go with the top. So I could just have a 500 gram shelter. Um, I don't know whether you can have the inner on its own. I don't think you can, but I'll have to check on that. Um, but there are kind of options. So I could either have the, the top on its own. I could have the top with the inner on the right, the top with the inner on the left. I could have a, a footprint or, or not have a footprint. I guess it's kind of up to the conditions and where I am um, coast to coast. If I do end up taking this, I'll just take everything. Um, obviously kind of, I'm going in the summer, kind of bugs, potential midges, stuff like that. I wanna make sure that I've got plenty of protection. From the pictures that I can see on the website, it doesn't appear to have a lot of vented areas within the fly sheet, if any, but what it does have is all the way around the outside, around the bottom, it has a gap. And I have um, seen some people using this and talk about how actually how the venting does help around the bottom. I mean, you know, nothing's going to be perfect. There is probably going to be condensation at some point. So just looking on the, the inner, pretty fine black mesh there, that's looking pretty good. Just gonna do a quick zip check. These are looking like YKKs to me. Yeah. Zip seen okay. And that's it. A quick unboxing. We've got 12 pegs. We've got a 20D ripstock polyester fly sheet. And then we've got the 20D nylon inner. 
I think the next thing I have to do is obviously take it out and do a bit of a test pitch and have a bit of a practice and just see um, how quickly it is to pitch. It looks pretty straightforward, but you know, like all of these things, it's just good to have a bit of a play with it. So I think the next video I do will be to do a pitch. I must give a bit of a shout out to Hengist's Wild Camps. I'll put the link to his channel. I think he's called, think he's called Steve. Uh, I'll put the link to his channel uh, in the video description because he owns one of these. He owns the Tarp Star one and I've watched quite a few of his videos and it's, yeah, he's got, he's got some really good examples of using this in uh, all sorts of conditions up in the Peak District and it seems to have done the job pretty well. So get in the comments, let me know what you're thinking. Do you think this is a possible option for me for my coast to coast trip? Some of you might have reservations about the fact there's no guidelines, but it is a Pyramid 10. It looks pretty good to me and I'm quite interested to see for 139.99 just to see how um, easy it is to use. So I'm gonna give it, a, give it a little bit of a test run on a few trips over the next uh, two or three months. And um, I'm glad I bought it now because I've got time to kind of think about it and see whether it will do the job. So I hope that's useful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.